What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Chris. Oh man, I gotta get this garage cleaned up. But hey, we're uh, knee deep in this one ton swap build. My 89 YJ line time. I still got a long ways to go, a lot of stuff to do. But hey, before we even get to any of that stuff, I gotta make some room. We got that one ton axle going in the back, that Sterling 10 and a half. And we gotta get in that uh, fuel cell. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so a few things that you kind of going to have to have uh, install on one of these tanks. Uh, you got to have a way to, to strap it down and, and, and mount it in the Jeep, like a, like a good, solid way. I, I ended up uh, going with the uh, Barnes four-wheel drive mounting system. It, it's, it's made for the RCI tanks. This one is RCI 2161A, if I remember correctly. Um, but really, like, in my experience, like, pretty much all the fuel cells like you really i mean this is a lot of weight you really want to make sure that you get it strapped down good um but not only that like I, i've heard stories a lot of people complain about the rci tanks I, i've seen it in person where they'll they'll crack at the welds if they're not strapped down and like mounted really well um and one of the things i love about the the barnes kit is, is just the way it really mounts in and kind of straddles the whole thing so it it, it gets clamp down really well i have it in one of my other rigs and I've, I've been really happy with it um they're super strong they hold on really well i haven't really had any issues as long as i've been using that i've done the straps before and i haven't had any issues with like the tank moving around but i've had issues where you know i've had one crack in the past and was it because of the straps was it because of that I, you know was it just a bad tank i don't know uh, but I, I like this system. It's just a little bit beefier and, you know, little one less thing to worry about. Uh, you know, I don't need, you know, 10, 15 gallons of, you know, fuel, like over 100 pounds flying through the back of the Jeep. So uh, I, I think that that's a really important part. A um, few other things, depending on the fuel system you're running, I'm going to just keep the RCA cap. And and I, I have... I have for my fuel system, I'm running an inline fuel system. So my fuel pumps inline, my fuel filters inline. Uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of leave everything be. Later on down the road, I'm going to be switching to an in tank. But for now, this is, this is kind of just going to hook up. I just need reducers. So I'm going from dash eight to dash six. Um, and there's a couple other things. So getting it through the body of the Jeep. I've seen a lot of people just kind of throw, you know, grommets in there and then push the line through and call it good. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, you know, I, I kind of get on my, my Jeeps pretty hard and I don't, I don't want like a line wearing through one of those grommets and then cutting it off, you know, on the trail. And, you know, I, I don't like crawling under a Jeep on the middle of the trail, getting gas up my armpit and everything else. So, um, they're, I'm going to be running, uh, basically they're called bulkhead fittings. Um, so this is, this is the one for the vent. I've got two 90 degree, uh, ones for my fuel lines, but all it is, is it basically clamps on. So you drill a hole, stick it through, put your washers on either side and you can clamp it on. And then you've got your, your fitting, um, to hook up your hoses to. So I, I'm always always into using these because you know you don't have to worry about the idea of any movement cutting a rubber fuel line uh, these are super strong they're brass they don't really wear out you don't have anything to worry about with them uh, so all i really got to do is i got to drill a bunch of holes i'm going to be using um I, i've got nut certs that i'm going to be using so I, I picked up a tool a while back you know one of the big things i found with jeeps is the constant need for these things you know the first time I, I ended up using it was when the nut certs for my skid plate they they rotted out you know like they you always have them seized to the bolt or they break or strip out or whatever else and those things you know like people sell these stupid little janky tools they they suck you know it's really a bolt and a and like a little weird bearing and they don't work for crap um, you know, I've seen people try to use them and, and strip the new nut cert out. I've seen all sorts of issues. It's just not worth it. This tool, it's not that expensive. I think I got it for like 40 bucks off, off Amazon. Uh, this one comes with a ton of different sizes. I, I feel like I'm using it every other day. 
Uh, but yeah, basically you got like these little swedging tools. You stick the nut insert in, clamp it down, take it off, you're done, and, and that's that. Um, so I'm gonna be using that to do all the mounting uh, for all the bolts to mount the uh, plates and everything down. Um, just feel like it's a cleaner install. It's it, it works really well. You could just drill the holes and get under there with a nut and a bolt, and, and it'll work just fine. Um, but I, I've been really happy with using these. It just makes it a little bit easier. Um, that way, you know, if I ever have to take it in or out, I'm not you know fussing with dropping nuts and bolts everywhere. But yeah, so we'll go ahead start getting this thing in. So these are the plates for mounting it. Um, they basically go underneath. These are what get bolted down to the body of the Jeep. I'm, I'm pulling mine all the way forward. Like not all, I'm probably giving myself about an inch and a half, two inches from the uh, from the actual fuel cell itself, but I, I'm using the uh, I'm using the lip of the mounting surface for the straps. So I'm going to use that to push my tank back, and that's going to kind of kind of de determine where I'm going to mount these plates. All I got to do is just get them kind of squared up and get my measurements from uh, end to end to make sure that cell it, it fits on the outside uh, with a tiny bit of a gap because those straps are really what kind of center everything on that tank. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and drill some holes for the, uh, for the fuel lines to pass through as well. The other ones we got to get done is is we're gonna mark out the rest for um, for all the nut certs and everything. Uh, those are gonna just have the bulkhead fittings. Uh, like I said, we're just gonna kind of pass it through, and be able to put the nut on, it, and then that way we don't have to worry about playing around with that too much. So I'm just going to be using, it's just a punch. That way I can mark all the spots where I need to drill. And, and these are going to be all for the nut certs. Um, the only nut certs that are going to be a little bit larger are going to be the outer four. So the two on each plate, because those are the ones that are actually going to mount the plate down to the, uh, the body of the Jeep itself. Uh, the other ones the other eight are actually going to be for the straps they'll mount to the body as well they'll end up clamping the plate down but those ones we're not going to bolt on until later on so that'll be after the straps are on And on this side, because of where I'm putting it up against, the plate's going to butt up against in this corner. So really all I got to do is get the, uh, the tape on the plates and get them kind of lined up and centered. So that way um, the plates are kind of where they're going to need to live. From there, all it's going to be is just drilling the holes and, and getting those nuts in. So everything looks pretty, pretty centered.
So all I'm gonna do is find whatever whatever little die, it's basically like a bolt, and all it does is pull it through. So it as it pulls it through, it clamps that down. That's all it really does. So uh, pretty simple tool. Like I said, it's kind of something that I got. It was kind of random. Got it because I didn't like the little tools that you know people sell with the uh, with the nut certs for like doing the skid plate and everything. And these are just one of those tools that I've just found myself using on everything. Um, you know, body armor, uh, fender flares, yes. doing this, um, you know, the skid plate bolts, like I said already. Uh, there's just a lot that you end up finding yourself uh, needing it for. So it's pretty simple, put it together. From there, all we're really gonna need to do is is throw the the nut cert on it we're gonna stick it down pull it together and that's it you're done way less hassle than than fighting with a wrench and and a, like two wrenches and i've seen all sorts of ways that they like to to make these little like chintzy tools like i said and it you know 50 bucks and you find yourself using it you know 10 20 times over um you know even that stupid little tool that they like to sell like i said it's really just a bolt a nut and a and like a little bearing and they want like 30 bucks for it. And I'm like, this stupid tool you get for, you know, $50 and you end up getting a ton of different sizes, not just the one for the skid plate. Um, so just a lot better investment. Um, so I'm just gonna knock out, I got a couple left, knock those out. Um, I gotta do the larger size. And then we're gonna start throwing in, uh, we gotta crawl under the Jeep and, and kind of get the, uh, the lines hooked up on those bulkhead fittings and we're gonna stick them through. Um, that way we can start getting that kind of buttoned up and then we'll, we'll put the plate down. I'm just going to bolt the plate down onto, uh, the Jeep. And then from there, we'll be able to worry about the straps for the fuel cell after. Um, I'm going to get the bulkheads put in before I, before I kind of put the tank in place. Just so that way I can get the lines figured out, make it a little bit easier. But yeah, we're just going to do the outer two we're not going to worry about the the four on the inner side of the plate because those are going to be for when the straps go on All right, guys. So we got the plates bolted down. Uh, the dr we drilled all the holes for for the for the fuel lines and the vent. Uh, this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna do for the breather and then supply return. Um, from now, I gotta go under the Jeep. I gotta get the bulkhead fittings onto the supply and return, and then I've got to get the filter the the bulkhead fitting for the filter passed through and bolted down. And then from there. Um, really I'll be able to kind of fit the tank in place and just start running the lines and, and that'll be able to wrap it up. All right, guys. So we're underneath the Jeep. I got the, the bulkhead fittings, the, the nineties I was talking about. I got them pushed on the line. They're clamped on. Um, so like I said, if you're running a carburetor though, you're only going to need the one. Um, but with a fuel injected system, most of them are going to be running too. you know, they're going to have a return. So I'm pushing those up and through, um, I like doing it this way because the fuel line, you know, the way it's situated will kind of help hold it up. That way you're not awkwardly reaching over the body of the Jeep trying to do both at the same time. 
So with the filter I was talking about, it's just going to live right there, uh, kind of up out of the way. I don't have to worry about anything, but it, that filter is going to kind of help prevent any dust and, and anything else from kind of, you know, working its way up into uh, the tank because, you know, you don't want to get a bunch of dirt and everything else uh, up into your fuel system. Um, so I'm going to have to awkwardly do this one, uh, but yep, this is how it's going to look. All right, guys, so we're right back up top of the Jeep. Uh, like I said, we're just going to kind of throw the washers and the nuts on, on both the bulkhead fittings, and then we'll be able to go ahead and clamp those down and, and get those situated, and then we'll be able to start kind of putting in the, the fuel cell and kind of working on um, getting that clamped down and then running the fuel lines. And one big thing I, I would I would personally suggest um, running all grade eight hardware. Uh, like I said, you know, it, it's you got a 120 pounds roughly, depending on the size tank you go with, you're gonna have a lot of weight kind of sloshed around the back. Uh, you know, don't skimp on bolts, you know, an extra 50 cents. The last thing you want is that thing coming off and bounce around the back side of your Jeep. Uh, so yeah, that's that pretty much wraps up the mounting um just kind of get it clamped down and then from there we're gonna be able to route the uh the fuel line So now on on the supply and return because on the vent I'm gonna I'm gonna run the the full size. Uh, we're just gonna throw the reducers on the supply and return, and then from there like we're just gonna kind of map out the best way to run the fuel lines and the vent, um, and we're just gonna route those up and over. Because I'm gonna try to run them down tight to the to the seat, so that way the seat will also help hold the vent up the way that I need it to be.
All right, guys, so I got the fuel lines all mapped out. Uh, they're measured out, kind of cut and placed the way that I'm gonna need them. Um, the whole purpose to this right here, why the vent is so much longer and, and pushed up the way it is, is this is, is kind of like my brakes. That way when I'm off camber or, or I hit a hard enough bump that I get a good slosh going and, and it pushes gas up into here, it makes it have to fight uphill. That way, the chances of me just dumping gas is is really reduced. Um, I, I like to try to get them up as high as I can. I just don't want to stick it up crazy up higher than than my seat. Uh, so this is about as high up as I can get it. Um, I think it'll work fine. If not, I might have to make some adjustments. Uh, you know, as I as I get it on the trail and see how it reacts. Uh, some people like talking about running a loop. Um, you know, like a full full twirl and the problem I have with that is gas gets trapped in there um so you know when you get gas push up the line and it falls in to that to that loop it gets trapped in that bottom loop and then you end up for me having issues where it could affect the tune um you know it starts to pressurize the tank a little bit uh, and, and then all of a sudden from there my you know my my fuel system's not too happy uh, this is the the best way i found to run it I, i've had issues in the past running the loop there's there's better systems out there but uh for this i think it's going to work perfect so we'll we'll see how it goes i might have to make some adjustments to it and we'll, we'll kind of work from there but for now i think this is going to work out great so we'll get it put in Okay, so as you can see what I mean about that, about that traveling uphill. So I got a good rise. Um, I, I think it'll be fine. I, I've done this same setup on, on another one of my YJs and, and I didn't really have any issues. Um, I, I don't see me having any problems with this one either. Uh, it fits really well against the seat. It doesn't come up higher than it. Um, so that, that makes me happy. I just didn't want something sticking up or something awkward looking. Um, so everything kind of came out exactly how I wanted it. And I'm really happy with it. Uh, this, this Barnes four wheel drive mounting system. I really like it. I think it was like 105 bucks shipped to my door. Um, but like I said, you know, yeah, there, there's, there's cheaper kits out there. There's little strapping systems or some people talk about going and getting some metal strap from the hardware store. I, I just don't trust it. Like I said, I've had one of these tanks crack. I've seen other people have, have issues with, with their tanks cracking. I've heard stories. Um, and, and it's not just with RCI. I, I've heard it with, with diff, several different manufacturers. You know, they, they just aren't happy with the, the tank flexing. Um, so the better you can mount it and secure it, the, the better you're going to you know, be off, you know, you're not going to have issues with, with that flex against the welds and, and problems like that. Um, will I put padding in it? I'm planning on maybe putting padding, but the way this fits in, it's so tight. I really don't, there's not really any movement. Um, so I'm not really too worried about anything like, you know, rubbing, you know, wearing through or anything. Um, but I, I'll keep an eye on it. And if I start seeing any, any gouging or anything start, I'll, I'll pick up some felt or something and just lay it between, um, between the steel, uh, the straps. And then that way I don't have to worry about it continuing to wear through. But, um, like I said, I've done this before and I, I didn't have any issues with it wearing. Um, so I'm not too concerned with it. The only other thing I'm not, I'm not going to hook up my, my gauge. So, I'm actually tearing a lot of the, the gauges out of this Jeep. Um, so I'm not really sure yet if I'm even gonna plan on running a fuel gauge. I might, I, I'm gonna kind of figure it out from there. So um, 
running a wire and all that, I, I don't really find it worth it right now. Um, just not something I'm concerned with. I wanted to get this mounted and figured out so that way I could start worrying about the four link and, and the Sterling 10 and a half that's got to go under it. Um, but I hope you guys uh, like the video. I hope it helped some of you guys that are thinking about doing a fuel cell on the back of your YJ. I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, it, it, that stock seat still fits in really good. So I get to keep that back seat. My kids get to be happy. Um, it, it fit really nicely. Everything closes, everything functions. So that's like the important part, right? We still get the, uh, the hatch to close. Everything works. Um, and, and it looks really good. Uh, eventually, maybe I'll do a shelf across it or something. So maybe I have a little bit of storage, but I, I'm not really too worried about it. Um, for right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Like, subscribe, comments down below. Uh, follow along. Uh, next video is going to be getting into the four links, so that should be fun. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.